Hi guys. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing um, what you know about positive and negative numbers. Uh, right now I'd like for you to open your math journal and copy down your learning target and your essential question. Please pause the video while you do this. Okay, welcome back. Um, we've mostly used positive numbers this year in math, numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. But last year you learned that there are numbers that are less than zero. Um, in this unit, we're going to be talking about positive and negative numbers. And we are going to explore models that will help you think about how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. Last year, you learned that whole numbers and their opposites are called integers. Take a minute to write the definition of an integer in your C notes. Integers are the set of whole numbers and their opposites. Well, what is an opposite number? Well, every number, every negative number is paired with a positive number. The numbers in the pair are the same distance from zero, but they're in opposite directions on the number line. So if you look at the number line here, you can see that, for example, 1 and negative 1 are opposites because each one is one space away from 0. You can label positive numbers with positive signs and negative numbers with negative signs. Okay, at this time I'd like for you to draw a number line in your journal. And what we want to do is think about what happens on a number line when we move to the left and to the right. Well, you know that when we move to the right on a number line, we're moving in a positive direction. And when we move in a positive direction, our values are increasing. You should be copying this into your C notes now. Okay, when we move to the left on a number line, we say that we're moving in a negative direction. And when we move in a negative direction, our numbers are decreasing. They're getting smaller. So quickly on your number line, I'd like for you to label the point zero. I'm going to put mine right here. And we're going to ask ourselves, where would the following pairs of numbers be located on the number line? Well, on your number line, I'd like for you to label 7 and the number negative 7. I'm going to place 7 right down here. And on the other side of 0, I'm going to place negative 7. But I want it to be about the same distance. So I'm guessing it's going to be close to here. OK. Next, I want you to place the numbers 2.7 and negative 2.7 on the number line. 2.7, I'd say, is probably around here. That's positive 2.7. And I'm going to place negative 2.7 in the same place, but on the opposite side of 0. 
so it should be around here. And the last number we're going to place is 1 half and negative 1 half. Those are closer to 0. I know where 1 half goes. It's about right here. And so negative 1 half is going to be the same distance, but on the opposite side of 0. Okay, take a minute to finish your number line, and next we're going to look at a couple chip models. Okay, now, um, you probably remember the chip models we did last year in sixth grade. In this problem, it says Julia uses red and black chips, chips to model her income and expenses. Her black chips represent a positive dollar. And I'm just giving an example of how you could do it in your journal as you're following along. And her red chips represent a negative dollar. And you can see that she, the black chips are positive dollars. She has four. And the red chips represent negative dollars. And she has six. Hmm. Now, think back to what we did when we looked at chip models in sixth grade and try to think about how we solve problems like this. Do you remember something called a zero pair? Well, if you remember the zero pair, you remember that we can pair together a positive and a negative chip. And the value of those chips together makes zero. One's worth one, the other's worth negative one. Together they're worth zero. And so we're going to create as many zero pairs as we can with Julia's chips. Now I put them a little bit close together, but you can see that we've created four. There's one, two, three, four sets of zero pairs, um, the value of which is zero. And so we can remove the zero pairs from our chip model, and it's not going to affect our value. And so now we can see that what we have left on the board are two red chips which represent two negatives which tells us that the value of the chipboard is negative two. Okay, let's look at one more chip model. We're going to start with three red chips draw these in your C notes. There's one, two, three negative chips. And now I'm going to add five positive chips. There's one, two, three, four, five. So I started with three negatives. I'm adding five positives. And can you see any zero pairs that we can place together and to remove from our equation? Well, I hope that you noticed uh, we have one, two, three zero pairs. And so I'm going to select these zero pairs since the value of this part is zero and I'm going to remove it from our chip model and now you can see that left on our board are two black chips which represents a value of positive positive two.
Now, you should have your C notes completed and be prepared to come to class tomorrow, prepared to work on the work for the day. Thank you.